Facebook. All right, here we go. I'm hoping this is tuning in, broadcasting correctly. Welcome to a post-pandemic live comedy experience uh, brought to you by Barry Uncovered and Canada's Top Mayor Award. Now, hopefully we're all good on Facebook land. Let me just do a quick little check. Great. Da, 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 da. You would think as a brown guy, I would have everything figured out when it comes to technical uh, issues, but I am no ordinary brown guy. I'm pretty mediocre, actually. Cool. Welcome, Facebook, to Hunger for Humor, Humor for Hunger. This is a four week, four days, four Wednesdays from today. Uh, we'll be doing a stand up power hour every Wednesday at 8 p.m., featuring some of the top comics from Canada all across the board. All the best comics have been taken up uh, for free for you guys. And all we ask is you laugh along with us because, you know, we can't actually hear you. This is one of those shows where you won't be able to interact with us directly except in the comments. So please feel free to leave comments, uh, send us naked pictures, whatever, you know, $5,000 e-transfer. I'll take that too. It's all good. Uh, and, you know, don't worry about our feelings. A lot of times people ask, hey, as a comedian, aren't you like, aren't you put off by the fact that you have to do to tell jokes in silence? And to that, I say, <laughs> have you done stand up comedy? It's all silence. Most of our time is spent in the basement of a random bar at 2 a.m. in the dark, talking into the netherworld to the hell spawn who show up to listen to our jokes. And um, well, this is kind of an upgrade except it still smells like pee in here. But anyhow, uh, this is going to be a fun night uh, for a good cause. Remember, there's a donation uh, link that I'm going to post right here, which will go directly 100% to Food Banks of Canada's COVID relief fund. There's absolutely uh, no cut being taken by us. You know, we're Canadian comedians. We survive on exposure, CERB, and the occasional nod from our uh, prime minister, you know, like a, yeah. And yeah, water, water is important. Hydrate guys, don't forget to hydrate. So this show has been brought to you uh, by uh, Barry Uncovered and Canada's Top Mayor Award Program. In fact, we reached out to some of Canada's mayors from some of uh, the biggest cities in the country. We thought it'd be fun to roast them a little, you know, have a little fun, take a little jab, raise some money. But for some reason, most mayors did not want to be insulted on a live broadcast by a bunch of sad, angry comedians. So we're going to do it anyway. Uh, actually, uh, some, some of the mayors did agree. And throughout the next four weeks, we'll be talking about some of their likes, their dislikes, their hobbies, and have some fun, raise some money, tell some jokes, make ourselves feel a little less empty inside. And by ourselves, I mean me personally, you know. I mean, what else are you going to do on a Wednesday night at 8 o'clock? Cry alone in the bathroom eating a whole pizza to yourself? <laughs> uh, I might be projecting. I might be projecting. Now, this show is meant to be Canada-wide. Uh, we've, uh, you know, we're, we're, we've gone, we're going coast to coast. We're broadcasting everywhere the internet can reach, except for China, apparently. Uh, ask John Cena what's up, poor man. Uh, I, might, I myself am in Toronto right now, and you're probably wondering, what's, what's this behind me? Well, this is porn, okay? This is porn. This is what I'm watching. And by porn, I mean a video of large groups of people gathering in malls and on the street. You know, it makes me feel dirty. I'm a little embarrassed. I'm a little turned on. Must be porn. That's what that is. Um, you know, but I am in physically in Toronto, even though psychologically I'm not well. Uh, <laughs> but I am in Toronto. You know, we call it the six. Uh, Toronto's called the six because that's how many COVID variants you can catch here. Um, you know, Toronto is also called the six because uh, that's how many people can afford the rent in this city. Um, and obviously Toronto is not haunted, unlike most towns, uh, because even the undead cannot afford the living standards here. Uh, now, I like to roast. That's kind of my thing. You know, I've produced a lot of roast shows. It's kind of why they brought me on board to take, you know, to have some fun with our mayors. So, you know, if I make fun of you, that just means I like you. And if I drive you to tears that means i think very highly of you so in that in the spirit of that let me let's talk about toronto a little bit you know um you know toronto is actually not even a city it's three suburbs in a trench coat i don't know if you guys knew that it's one of the most 
diverse cities uh, in the world, uh, you people will tell you to go back to your country in a hundred different languages. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, income inequality, unfortunately, is a big problem in Toronto. You know, the streets are full of, uh, you know, homeless, you know, drug dealers, drug addicts and sex workers surrounded by condos that are full of drug dealers, drug addicts and sex workers. Real, real problem, real problem there. Um, our favorite sport is losing. You know, our current mayor looks like the vice president of a high school and our previous mayor did crack outside of a high school. So we've got a, we, we've been improving steadily been baby steps. Um, comments coming in, amazing. It's from our own comedians, even better. This is such an authentic comedy experience, you guys. You're really missing out on that basement experience. Um, it was a super blood moon last night, by the way. I don't know if any of the people in the comments, uh, you know, felt the effects. Like, it must be why I've been depressed since 2006. Uh, last night's super blood moon apparently is a very consequential blood moon. And you know what? Don't no hate if you don't believe in, you know, some people believe that billionaires will fix the planet and others believe that the moon has an effect on your emotions. They're both valid. Okay. No judgment there. Um, um, some comments coming in, some comments coming in again from other comedians making fun of my hair and tattoos. This is real. Uh, if, if you weren't sure whether I'm mentally ill or not, this should be plenty of proof of my very, very fragile psychological state of mind. Um, actually, like more than half of people in Toronto, I am also a, uh, I'm an immigrant. I'm, I mean, I am a citizen now. I've been here for almost 20 years. It's actually my fourth citizenship from four different countries. Uh, I'm starting to think that I'm the problem here. You know, when uh, like four different governments have to issue you passports, you have to ask what the problem is, like, you know, how much you would call a career immigrant? Like, obviously, I live in Canada now. Uh, before this, I used to live in Bangladesh. I'm half Bengali. Bengali people in the audience, give me a shout out, some emojis or some. I'm also half Indian. I used to live in India. And uh, before all of that, I, I actually was born and raised in Russia, in Moscow, back when it was the Soviet Union. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't believe me. And you know what? Brown people are everywhere. We're like the Taylor Swift of people. You know, you cannot escape us. Uh, so don't be too surprised. Don't be too surprised. And um, one thing I realized when I arrived here, when my family arrived here, is that internationally, there's a certain reputation that Canada has. What, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but people call Canada like a nicer version of America. People are like, you know, if you're going to go to North America, go to Canada. It's like a nicer, cuter, more adorable version of America. And when I got here, I realized it's not even close. It's not even the right country to compare Canada with because Canada is a giant winter wasteland full of high-functioning alcoholics obsessed with hockey. Okay? Canada is Russia with gay rights. That's what it is. And weed. And there's legal weed, which is amazing. Uh, it's what's been keeping me going. And to be honest, it's, um, you know, it's the legalization of marijuana is kind of half in, half out for me personally. I mean, obviously it's legal now. It's legal to smoke, but it's not legal to sell, which is what we wanted. We want some drug dealer money. Okay, all these streaming sites are not going to pay for themselves. There's like 15 of them now. There's like, there's like obviously there's Netflix, there's Disney Plus, there's Hulu, there's Apple TV, Pornhub Premium, OnlyFans, like, I'm, what am I supposed to do? You need some drug dealer money to afford all that. But no, it's legal to smoke, but it's not legal to sell weed, even though weed is legal. That's just, that's odd. Actually, you can sell weed. You can sell weed, but you'll need a $10 million license, right? You need $10 million for the right to sell weed in Canada. Ten, I'll, I'll have to be a Coke dealer first. You see, you feel me? It's messed up. It uh, doesn't make any sense. But, you know, smoke some weed and you'll forget all about that. Got some high-quality marijuana here in Canada. Um, I'm not sure if that's part of our messaging today. As uh, <laughs> as a Food Banks of Canada fundraiser, uh, you know, we have uh, – we have, actually, actually have, a, have a lot of people to thank. We have, uh, obviously, you, our audience, which is here tonight. And also, I'd like to give a quick, quick shout-out to our sponsors here, uh, Lily Financial Group. Stewart Solicitors and Infinity Printing Solutions. As you can tell, we've reached far and wide across every spectrum of what's keeping the Canadian economy afloat. 
I'm just saying, I don't know. I have no idea how business works. Now there's some comments about the microphone on my chest. It is a Shure SM58. Thank you, Mark Trinidad. It's the most commonly used mics uh, on the planet <laughs> because they're the cheapest and artists are poor. Fun fact. And somebody just mentioned that they didn't recognize that as a microphone at first. Well, if you're seeing penises everywhere, I suggest you consult a psychologist, but I can totally see why, you know, you would, um, yeah. Mm. Cool, 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 All right, so I've rambled on for long enough. Um, I would like to, first of all, welcome everybody properly to the show. We're, we have like an amazing lineup tonight and for the next four Wednesdays, we have some of the top comedians from across the country. They've been on Netflix, HBO, CBC, Just for Laughs, your local no frills maybe, who knows? Uh, and our first comic is actually one of the rising stars in Canadian comedy, a friend of mine, a very funny comic who's done all the biggest shows. Uh, please, please welcome and give it up for Tamara Siobhan. Take it away, Tamara. Hello. Oh my God, it's always been a dream to go live in Barrie, so this is great. Um, hi, I'm Tamara Siobhan. I am still trapped in my boyfriend's basement. I've been blinking twice for a year and a half. What is happening? Okay. Um, I don't know what stage of the pandemic you're in right now, but right now where I'm in, like I'm in the stage where I want to do things I've like never wanted to do before. And it's becoming a problem. Like, I don't know who I am anymore. Right. Um, because I was sitting down, I was watching reality TV. Cause that's what really gets me to feel better about myself. Like watching other people just ruin their lives in public. I'm like, that's perfect. I need that to keep going. And I started like, something came over me and I was like, okay, like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And I looked my boyfriend in the eye and I was like, do you want to work out together? Like, who is that? Like, who was that person talking? I don't even work out by myself okay now i'm trying to bring someone into the mix he, and he had the audacity to be like yeah sounds good i definitely want to work out together so i start going to work out and he starts going to work out and i don't know if you guys know this but people work out differently right like i work out like it's not like people are like i love the gym like i'm not that kind of person like when i go to work out i send an alarm right not one second over will i go in the name of health. Like, no, I got my timer going. I'm lifting four pound weights. I'm like listening to heavy metal music or something. I don't know what was playing in the background. I was just trying to get out of the situation. I'm working out. I'm working out. The alarm goes off. I drop the weights, right? I'm just so happy. And then he looks me in the eye and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm done, right? I'm done. And he's like, well, I still have an hour and a half to go. I was like, I'm sorry, are we trying to fuck other people? Like, what do you mean an hour and a half to go? Like, we're done here, right? Like, I like to do like a good old curves workout. Like, who is she? What do you mean an hour and a half? Why are you trying to get that jacked, right? You gotta be suspicious in these times. Everyone watch your partners. How hard are they working out? Is it for you or is it for somebody else, right? Because I like a curves workout. You guys know curves. You guys remember curves? It was like white background, purple cursive. It was like curves, right? Really cute. Like, they're like, come in, circuit training, only for women. And you get your heart pumping by like standing next to an elliptical being like, imagine if, like curves. That's the kind of like jam that I'm about. I'm not about this whole like workout until you're sweating, workout until like you, you can't see your friends anymore because you're actually like dry heaving. Like, no. Right. And so he's like, well, if this isn't going to work for you, why don't we try fasting? And I don't mean like fasting. Okay. I mean like fasting the way like white people do it for clout, right? Fasting, like Instagram fasting. We're like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Hey guys, welcome back to my page. Um, so from like 9 a.m. until 4 p.m., I can eat whatever I want, like whatever I want, seriously, whatever I want. Okay. And then from like 4 p.m. until midnight, I cry. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to try that diet, but thank you so much. I'm not going to starve myself for like eight hours. I'm not a hunter gatherer. Like I have food. Like, let me just enjoy it. You know what I mean? But no, I can't enjoy anything. I can't enjoy anything. I'm from Scarborough, right? So 
you don't get to enjoy a lot there. Like I'm in, I'm in like a Scarborough, like not Scarborough, like oh the beaches Scarborough. Like I mean, like enjoy tonight at Loblaw Sticker Scarborough, right? Like right at the end of the night, you're like, I guess I will have ribs, but just by chance, that kind of thing, right? So I don't know if you guys know about Scarborough, um, but Scarborough is like the only place that has no welcome slogan. Um, yeah, no welcome slogan, like whatsoever, which is like crazy because every other place. <laughs> Um, has a welcome slogan. Even Barry has two welcome slogans. Two. You guys have one on the way in. Barry has one on the way in. And they have one on the way out because they don't know how Barry's been for you, right? So on the way in, it's Barry well played. Which we can all agree. Not all the time, right? <laughs> Not all the time. But on the way out, it's Barry good enough which is like still better than nothing like still better than nothing and then oshawa has a slogan they just out of nowhere like oshawa decides they can have a slogan um and theirs is really cute i really like oshawa's slogan because it's like oshawa prepare to be amazed and that one is super tricky okay that one's super tricky because they don't say how, right? They don't say how. Is it going to be the scenery or is a homeless guy going to try to open my car door with his teeth, right? Both amazing, right? Just different. Just different. So I just want to know if there's something going for Scarborough, like anything at all. We can get something going. Maybe like Scarborough, it's where you are, right? That's good. Uh, you know, that would work. Or some just some informational shit, right? Or like Scarborough, lock your doors, right? Or even just like Scarborough, ooh, keep driving. Like anything will do, right? But I left Scarborough to quarantine in Mississauga. Can you see how I'm regressing? I'm regressing in life, right? Now I'm in Mississauga, home of like parks and car dealerships. Like there's nothing else here. And like your first real job, like that's all Mississauga has to offer. Like, did you work in a factory in Mississauga or did you hang out at a parquet? Like, there's only one or two options, right? Um, so Mississauga is an interesting place. As you can tell from me moving to Mississauga, yes, I am dating a Croatian man, okay? Um, and Croatians are really crazy. Like, they're, they're fun, right? It's been a year and a half since I'd had salt and pepper on my chicken. Um, can someone come save me? This is really serious. This is really serious. <laughs> I'm having problems, right? I want to start like a whole thing called like quarantine couples, like just find all these quarantine couples and see if they survive the pandemic. And it will be like, everything will be done. Like Justin Trudeau talks to us. Right. Cause I don't know if you've ever realized when Justin Trudeau makes an announcement, he does it so slow that you like know what he's talking about. Right. You know what he's talking about. Like, have you ever broken up with someone trying to be like, yeah, this isn't working out anymore. And like, please get all your stuff together. And like, honestly, I just feel like it just, Maybe like good luck in the future, like all the best. And then you wake up the next morning, like, hey, babe, what do you want to get for brunch? And you're like, what? <laughs> Why don't you? Wow. You got to talk to them like Justin Trudeau, guys. This is what you got to do. You just have to be like, because you know, he'll be like, hey, Canada. And you're like, feed it up, Justin. Right? Like, that's how you got to talk, though, to retain the information. I have to be like, it's not me. It's you right and if we practice physical distancing forever it will never be essential for me to call you again like you need this so thank justin trudeau go watch some videos break with your partner and let's have a hot girl summer you know what i'm saying you guys have been so awesome thank you so much i've been tamara Shabon. bye yes tamara that was very funny <laughs> it's just <laughs> oh my god those scarborough jokes triggered me a little bit first when i first came here i lived for about a year and a half in scarborough uh right near the welcome sign actually which kind of exists but is more of a aspirational welcome sign let's just say but yeah that was tamara siobhan um once again love those uh triggering scarborough jokes we have you know three more comics tonight um just as funny you know just as cool and if you are 
seeing wisps of smoke coming in between me and the mic. Don't worry about it. Uh, I just had to take a little break. <laughs> uh, the comments are popping off again. Mark Trinidad, thank you. He's going to be our co-host for uh, this series of shows. Next week is going to be hosted by himself, actually. And uh, I'm going to take it over to our next comedian and not waste too much time because this is what we're here for. A star-studded comedy lineup. Not some brown dude in his living room fantasizing about going to the mall in Japan. Yes, thank you. I'm, just, I'm getting support in the comments. <laughs> uh, this is actually much better than most nights of comedy uh, that I've had. So, yeah, thank you, guys. So, up next is actually a Canadian comedy legend. When I first came to Canada, uh, you know, I got a job at a call center. And my hours were somewhere like from midnight to midnight. Um, I'd get like 20 minutes a day to myself. And the, the one thing I would do is watch uh, the Comedy Network. And Glenn Foster, our next act, was on all the time. He's an OG veteran. He's been on Just for Laughs, CBC, every festival imaginable. A very, very funny uh, comedian who's just about ready in his amazing setup. Oh my God, this is tripping me out. Guys, give it up for Glenn Foster. Yay, clap, 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 yay, clap, 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 yay. Okay, is that banner going to be across my eyes the whole time? Do I have to duck in and out of the... Oh, look, look, now it's... Uh, oh, wait, going the wrong way. I was going to be like... Uh... Anyway, I want to thank, uh, thank uh, the organizers and uh, Dinesh for this uh, opportunity to uh, shower and uh, get out of my pajamas. Although, in retrospect, I kind of wish I'd done that the other way around. But the good news is that uh, now I don't have to do the laundry. So, man, this pandemic, I don't know. So uh, I, I, I think there's maybe like 12 people watching this. But I am going to, in my mind, envision that maybe like 14 or 15 people are watching this, which uh, I, this is like a, a step above doing it to yourself in the mirror, actually. But uh, it is for a good cause. That's the thing. I am here for a good cause. Food banks. Uh, and then earlier I saw a, uh, a little logo on the screen it was uh, Undercover Barry. <laughs> Is there a, a lot of berry that is covered at any point? Is it that there? Oh, berry uncovered. That's right. Yeah. So it was like, is there really any parts of berry that like still covered that? Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Like the secret part of berry type thing. But uh, anyway, yeah. Danish is mentioning the set. Check it out. Huh? This is none of your uh, CGI uh, green screen bullshit. This is a real fake brick wall. Man, this is pandemic thing is hygiene, personal hygiene, completely gone. Like I, I, I stopped wearing deodorant and um, I don't miss it. I do not miss it. Um, my family, not too happy with that decision. Uh, I miss them. I miss them. Actually, they're in another corner of the house, I suppose. So this is a... Almost like a Zoom show, except with no response whatsoever. <laughs> a Zoom close like this show is like very close to no response, but this show is like no response. So it's good, good practice, I guess. I, I, I'm getting too used to these Zoom shows because you do like these corporate weird Zoom shows when you drop in on like somebody's office. You know, not office, but they're, everybody's working from home and you all have a Zoom call together. Anyway, they're fun. They're fun, but they're they're weird sometimes because you'd have like you got 25 people in the audience and 20 of them have their mics off. So that would be five more people better than this situation right now. But what's going to happen when I go back to doing real shows? I'm going to have to hold up picture frames around the audience just so it feels comfortable to me. But the uh, a lot of a lot of comedy like doesn't even work. What comedy would you know? Even if you were able to do a live show, you'd be like, "I just flew in from." No, you didn't. 
you didn't just fly in. You didn't fly, just do anything. You, you might have flown in 14 days ago, perhaps, and now you're in the whole quarantine lockdown. Here's my question about this whole lockdown thing, by the way, because it, I mean, it's been so long now. Are, are, are we locked down or are we locked up? Because a fine line, there's where does the where is the line? You know, I'm just waiting for the knock at the door. Good morning, sir. We're with the uh, Ford government. Uh, we're just here to ensure that your uh, doors are adjusted so they lock from the outside. Okay. Well, moving on. I guess it'll just be me. I'll be the one talking. <laughs> For the for the time that I'm here, I do love the notion of a food bank, though I have to say that I do love the notion of a of a food bank. <laughs> Thank you, Canada's top mayor award. Canada's top mayor award just said we are laughing out loud. You just can't hear us, so that's that's nice. Cool set says Jane. All right, Jane. Thank you very much. Um, that, even that feels like a little more interaction, I suppose. But uh, or locked in. Well, that's what I said. We're locked up. If you're locked up, you're locked in kind of thing with the ah, it's just ridiculous look at my hair look this oh man and i gotta go till july now i think before like my dog can get a haircut but i can't get a haircut it, it makes no sense like, like it's getting to the point it's almost at the point where people are going to yell because it happened last time there was a little it was like get a job hippie and and i have to be like i can't it, it'll interfere with my Serb. Do you remember the initial Serb? The the original Serb was was uh, uh, the rule was that that <laughs> the rule was that you could only uh, make a thousand dollars, like if or you lost the entire two thousand dollar benefit if you made more than a thousand dollars. So feels weird, I guess, in a job interview. When you're like, does this job pay exactly $999.99 every two weeks? I hope the math is right there. We're not good at math. You know this, right? There was a survey done a while ago. They found out one in four Canadians cannot do basic math. So we know this statistic is probably wrong. For the food bank, which uh, I do. I love the notion of a food bank. I love the, if I was going to rob a bank, it'd be a food bank. Oh, yeah. I'd have to go to food court, I guess. Uh, how do you plead? The, Please, sir. I, I want more. No, pleading? All right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, now what? We just wait for the other vaccine? Is that what... Uh, because I got my one shot, I got the Pfizer, got the good stuff, uh, got the good stuff, and uh, none of this uh, mucking around stuff. You know, you know, Trudeau's trying to arrange it right so that you get your second shot uh, when you go to the polling booth. And here's the thing: we would have had vaccines a lot sooner in Canada. The problem is SNC Lavalin does not make one. I'm sorry. Uh, we pharmaceuticals does not exist. <laughs> anyway, oh, it turns out uh, Justin Trudeau and I uh, have something in common because uh, it turns out um, uh, his mother, Margaret, who uh, gets paid to speak uh, as a, a mental health expert. She's a mental health expert. Um, and my mother also is a mental health expert uh, because when she heard what Margaret got paid to speak, she went, that's crazy. And um, I concur with her diagnosis. Right. That's probably enough political stuff. <laughs> we weren't supposed to do any political stuff. But, oh, well, what happened there? Mm. Ah, this is not good. Eh? Look, I've gained, I gained like 15 pounds during this stupid pandemic, which, but the good news, the good news is, I only have to stay back uh, 1.9 meters from other people now. So I'm building up a protective layer of me around me, right? You want to get to me? You got to go through more me. That's how it works. 
right? Like the further out my stomach goes, the further my head is back from other people, right? So that's how it works. So I actually did, I uh, had a part-time job. I was actually, uh, I was actually uh, uh, delivering food at one point. Uh, I was a hero. Thank you. I was a hero out there being a hero, uh, frontline. And uh, I'll just say this, if I'll just make a little public service announcement for all the candidates for the top mayor and undercover Barry and everybody else, this is the story that needs to be told as a, as a person out there on the road on behalf of all delivery people. What we really need is open bathrooms. It's like the first pandemic, especially all the fast food chains are like, well, we don't need to, we don't need to uh, have our restaurants open. So they just close them up completely and serve everybody through a food slot at the side of the, so it's embarrassing is what it, quite frankly, you know, oh, look, oh, look, there's our hero taking a dump behind the bush. It's embarrassing. It's, uh, I had to get a new cape. It's a pretty sad, pretty sad affair all around. And all these mask rules too. Like it, people are just insane now. Like you could go into a bank with a gun, but you better have a mask on. Right? Or unless you're there to rob the food bank. I'd probably, the food bank, probably very little security, right? I've never cased a food, a food bank, but I would imagine there's not a whole lot of, uh, it's like they're giving it away kind of thing. I don't know. I haven't, it doesn't matter. I shouldn't even joke about it, especially when I'm looking like this. It's not that, by the way, does this make me look fat? I should ask that. Um, not, not, not the shirt or anything, just the fat. I think it's the fat that makes me, I'm not even sure if I have abs, seriously. Um, but listen, uh, it's been fun, uh, talking to myself mostly for, uh, this 10 minutes. And uh, the reason I'm on this big tour is because my new album just came out. It's called Unchecked. You can uh, check it out at uh, thatcanadianguy.com. There it is, right across the bottom there, thatcanadianguy.com. And uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Sorry, I went a little overtime there. Thank you. Glenn, thank you. Thank you very much. That was Glenn Foster. That was that. I love that set. Not gonna lie, old school physical set. None of that CGI Disneyfication of anything. But yeah, I. I mean, I personally could not. I don't even know. I, I went with a background of a random guy walking through the streets of Japan just to feel something, you know. Because in the before times, before you know, before. Uh, I actually was doing shows, uh, you know, in in Tokyo, Bangkok, New York, LA, Toronto, all the COVID hotspots. You know, got a got a nice little taste, and uh, now they're also the prime candidates for the climate change uh, catastrophe that's about to hit us. So we're doing great, guys. We're doing great. Um, so I'm gonna keep the show going, but once again, a real quick check to our sponsors. I'd like to give them a little shout out. They're the reason why this show is free. Uh, but again, please, guys, there's a link for donations in the comments. Uh, throw some money at the food bank. You know, if anybody needs uh, help right now, it would be nice to give them some help. Everybody, we all, we are all kind of struggling a little bit. Uh, Canadian comedians, if Canadian comedians are trying to help you, you are the less fortunate person in this equation. Trust me. And we get paid in maple leaves. So... Please donate some money to the Food Bank Canada of Canada COVID Relief Fund. Cool. Now, you know, the last couple of comedians uh, were in Toronto. I'm in Toronto. Well, actually, no. Glenn was coming in from Ottawa. So we're, we're, we're going to hit all the cool metropolitan areas of Ontario with our next comedian, who is a back-to-back -back winner of Thunder Bay Comedy Idol. As you can tell, she's uh, from Thunder Bay. The very, very funny Mickey Hughes. Take it away, Mickey. Hi. Thank you very much, uh, Dinesh, and thanks for asking me to be here. Um, I know Glenn didn't like the stuff going around, but I love it. I feel like I'm on CNN during a hurricane watch. I think this is its really exciting. I want to get banners and stuff. Um, I, uh, I don't have all the tags that the other guys do. Uh, my name is Mickey. Hughes, and I hope you're not disappointed. That's probably the most masculine name you're going to hear. <laughs> probably thought maybe a guy was coming up. Oh, Mickey Hughes. 
uh, I used to be really upset over having like a guy's name, but I had a really good talk with my dad, Nancy. And, you know, he told me that it's, uh, it's not that, not that big of a deal. And I had bigger problems in life, like, um, like not being very bright. So, um, he just said he was going to remain the optimist and I didn't even know that he was an eye doctor. So that was really exciting to me. I don't know why we didn't have nice things. Um, this is really different without any feedback. I'm just going to assume that I am that I'm killing it. I'm in a really good mood today. I'm celebrating uh, four years sober. <laughs> and uh, I know you guys are all just going wild right now. It's crazy. I have no idea how to celebrate this. Uh, it's not, it's not like consecutive. It's like, it's like, it's all together, but it's still a really big deal because that's, that's four years. That's a really long time. So I'm sure you guys are being very supportive out there. I am very happy though that I quit drinking. I stopped doing, uh, stopped doing a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, one time I put pork chops in a toaster because I was trying to defrost them which was ridiculous. I don't spend a whole pile of time in my kitchen. Anyway, it's court ordered. I, one time I ate green crayons just to prove that they weren't toxic. Um, Cause you do really stupid experiments when you drink too much. Um, there's some good stuff, really good stuff. I don't get fired anymore. One time I got fired from Little Caesars Pizza for putting help me I'm trapped at Little Caesars Pizza in the top of a pizza box. So uh, not the best, not the best decision. My mom and I have a really good relationship now, though. Uh, may she rest in peace. Yeah, she uh, she didn't die. She is very uh, excited that her daughter is not an atrocious uh, drunk anymore. So I don't call her at three o'clock in the morning crying about my stomach hurting because I ate a bunch of green crayons to prove that they weren't toxic. <laughs> um, sobriety is inspiring, not like how I do it. I, I would hope so. Um, <laughs> thanks, Mark. Oh my gosh, it's like real feedback. Okay, the, the four of you are going crazy. Um, so I am a lot like my mother. Uh, neither one of us uh, wanted kids. And uh, I don't, I don't have any kids. And uh, something I like to say when people ask me if I have children is not anymore, because there's no follow-up questions. Nobody gives you a hard time when you say that. There's really nowhere to the conversation to go. Um, right here. I did a. I just <laughs> I didn't ask us not to do anything uh, political, and they've done political stuff since then. So I'm just trying to to um, decide here where I'm gonna go. You know what, I'm gonna talk about my 23 and me uh, kit that I did. If you've ever done your own ancestry and you can find out like where you're from and where you've been and that your parents are liars or someone's a slut or something, <laughs> you can kind of find that out pretty quickly uh, when you do your when you do that because I thought that I was part Aboriginal and like I did, I thought I was. I mean, I, I went to like some powwows, I got a, tattoo of a dream catcher on my shoulder, like nothing, like nothing huge, but I'm not, like I have none. And then I found out that I'm saying that I had no idea, like I'm a little bit Jewish and I've got a little bit of German in me too, which actually explains why I kept trying to kill myself in my twenties. Um, that's, I'm just stopping for like a laugh right, right now. <laughs> I, uh, I have a doctor who said, uh, <laughs> and I was up, and now there's no feedback. I hope there's a, hope there's a lot of people here. This is also my second show ever uh, doing a comedy like this. Uh, my doctor did say that uh, I said that I suffered from low self-esteem, and he said that it is very common uh, among total losers. So, but uh, everybody. <laughs> But everybody has that friend, right? That weed friend. We're talking about weed. We can talk about weed. I'm talking about it. Hopefully, you're not going to cut me off. Um, you know, like the friend that's like, "Oh, if you if you can't say smoke weed and it's 
and, and it makes you better. If you have a stomach ache and if you have a headache, uh, you know, you're too short, you just smoke some weed. Like everybody just tells you, uh, or, you know, the person that just gives you all of the information just to uh, just to smoke weed. Anyway, that was probably the worst doctor um, that I ever had. Not from Dinesh. I hope Dinesh isn't a doctor. Uh, they put a they put a sign outside my building today that said "Danger Men Working Above," and uh, it freaked me out because I don't know what danger men are or why they'd be on my roof. <laughs> so I took my plant inside because I don't need um, that shit in my life. Uh, does anybody else use their serve money for social distancing fines? I like I don't have any friends to 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 hang out with, but um, you know, if I can just use it, just sort of keeps the money all in the community. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's where we're, or I don't go too much into the pandemic. Um, anyway, I'm just absolutely being like destroyed, uh, by my period. And I was freaking out earlier because I'm like, I'm going to say something stupid or embarrassing. And, uh, I think that's it. I'm good. <laughs> Thanks for the time to Okay, so I wasn't given it like, like done. Like I'm okay. It's good. Did everybody go home? <laughs> this is. Hmm. I'm gonna send him a text. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was just like, like, hmm. Is this a bit? <laughs> no. She, like she looked uncomfortable the entire time. Is she no. like I didn't I didn't amp it up at all. There's nowhere to go from that level of anxiety. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I was also like, is she going to talk about weed? Because I was talking about weed. It's fine. It's legal. It's like talking about alcohol, right? I would imagine. I'm an alcoholic. Ah, well, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's party. I mean, let's, let's, if, if you're not an alcoholic after 14 months in a pandemic, you're a psychopath. And I want to stay like that's how I mean, no, really get help if you know if people need help. But. <laughs> like, there's, there's no verbal suicide underneath. It's, it's really not something. But it's just that my, I guess what I'm trying to say is everybody's tried to cope, right? But every now and then you'll run into somebody who's like, oh, I'm thriving. I got so much done. I got in better shape. And I'm like, you stay away from children. And I, got a lot of, I got a lot of comedian friends. I'm just around talking about thriving right now. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm not thriving. But anyway, great set. Thank you. Thanks again. I'm going to uh, take it back. Um, Mickey Hughes, everybody. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I wasn't sure. I, for a second, I'm not going to lie, I forgot I have admin privileges and that I can actually take her in and out. I'm like, why is she talking about being done? What do you mean she's done? <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to go in now and take her out of the show. So, my bad. Um, you know, I'm trying to have some fun myself. I've been drinking my tea and I think I forgot what I put in it because I'm feeling good. So, on that note, I'm going to bring on our headliner. And before I do that, um, once again, a quick reminder, you can donate to food banks through the links provided in the comment section. You can also go to bringyouragame.ca in the ticker over there. Another quick, quick shout out to our sponsors, uh, Lily Financial Steward Solicitors, Solicitors and Infinity Printing Solutions, as well as Moffitt's Mazda. Forgot about those guys, uh, but Moffitt's, thank you. And Mazdas are cool. They look like cats, you know, so they've got that going for them. Uh, but anyhow, our headliner of the evening just got nominated for a Canadian Screen Award, is the host of like every show on CBC, CBC Q, Canada Reads, whatever show, you know, our parents watch uh, right before they, they get down to it. And by it, I mean sleep. Um, very funny guy. He's been on Just for Laughs. He's been on several comedy specials. Uh, please give it up for Ali Hassan. Ali, take it away. What's going on, man? The word headliner. A bit strong, I think, huh? It's the father of four in a black t-shirt in a nondescript dull office. Anyway, it's fine. Barry, does anybody, there's like five people in Barry who watch and listen to the CBC. Those are all unnecessary credits. I only say that because I was in Barry once and uh, came on to those credits and everybody in that comedy club was like, buddy, we don't understand anything that you just said. Um, listen, I'm, I know it's not ideal. I'm still happy to be here. 
I'm still happy to just spew words out of my mouth. It's a, it's, it, it's more than what I have. My, I, all my safe spaces have been taken away. My safest space, and I know you're thinking the mosque. No, my safest space was the grocery store, and that is not a good place to be anymore. I'm not, I'm not having a good time in the grocery store. I used to be a chef, so the grocery store would calm me down. That was my meditative space. Now I'm out wear glasses. I wear a mask. Shout out to the mask and glasses combo wearers out there, first and foremost. What a horrible time to be alive for all of you guys. I mean, you're alive, which is great, but what a horrible time. Uh, I just, as soon as I'm in that grocery store, within seconds, glasses fogged up, just everything, and I'm like, ah, uh, who's there? Is there somebody? Sir, 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 we can't be touching. How close are you, sir? What do you rip everything off? Whew. It's the zucchinis. But still, who knows what it could have been? Disaster narrowly avoided. And every time my wife's like, make sure you pick up this, make sure you pick up this, I'm getting none of those groceries right on the list. First of all, I can't even see the list when I get to go. And I know, like she had said, bananas. So I'm like, all right, I'll get the bananas. There they are. Go home. Japanese eggplant. You know how much your children hate you when they're slicing Japanese eggplant into their cereal in the morning? Papa, these are gross. Fuck it. The time of great adventure. Okay? Enjoy yourselves. I don't like it. I saw something the other day which I've never seen. I, I, I've never felt a level of jealousy and disgust at the same time as I did the other day. I am, I'm trying to open a grocery bag. I'm trying to open a fucking grocery bag, and I am very, very angry. And a woman in front of me pulls down her mask, licks her thumb, and opens the bag. And I was like, disgusting. And also, you're my hero, lady, because you just get to go on with your life. And I'm here rubbing the outside of a fucking radish for moisture just so I can something to. Also, the hand sanitizers, very useful, obviously useful. But there is a very big difference between your regular hand sanitizer kills 99% of the germs and then your hand sanitizer with moisturizing liquid in it. Those are two different worlds. One of them, you squirt it, it evaporates from your hands within three seconds. The other one needs a warning. You know what I'm talking about? When you go in and you squirt that other one and you're like, ah, fuck, I guess I'm going to be here for a little while. What is in this? Is this olive oil, sperm? What is in this thing? You got to have a warning. If you are a hand sanitizer manufacturer, give us a warning on the moisturizing lotion. I don't need it. I don't need the double. I'll go home and moisturize. Don't you worry about me. Um, any, by the way, you guys, okay, that's not good. That has nothing to do with anything. People who get their glasses fogged up, I don't, uh, I don't know if you've been going through this. People love to help out. They love to mention to you, hey, your glasses are fogging up. Yeah, I know. I use my fucking eyes. I'm aware that my glasses. Thanks for the hot tip. Your glasses, they're fu I know. I know. I wasn't trying to get by in life on my sense of smell and my umami. I get it. I hate it. And no thanks. I don't need your incredible help. My buddy the other day, he's a doctor. He's a doctor. And he goes, dude, there's actually, um, I have a tip. There's uh, something that doctors do. Uh, to help their glasses from fogging up. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm all ears. What is it? What is it? And he goes, right on top of the mask, you can sort of pinch down on this. I'm like, idiot, I know about the pinch down. We've been in this pandemic for 15 months. I know about the pinch. That's not helping. That's not. This is the privilege of people with glasses, without glasses. They think they can help with stupid advice like this. I'm trying to breathe downwards. <sighs> I'm going to have an overbite by the end of this thing. I'm trying to <laughs> breathe down so it doesn't go up. Anyway, the one thing uh, that was overdone at the beginning of this pandemic, it still may be being done. I'm just not seeing anybody. But for the first little while, while we could still see, but we had to keep a distance, people were very big in the elbow. Buddy, what's up? What's up? always with the elbow bump? The elbow. The, el the elbow, the thing I've been sneezing and coughing into for five years. Why are you touching this? 
the elbow. This is how I flush a urinal. Why are you easily the most disgusting part of my body? Everybody wanted to stand back and fucking salute or something, man. Elbow. If I'm ever trapped in a bathroom and there's no tissue to turn the disgusting doorknob with, this is how I'm getting out of a bathroom with my elbows. Don't touch my elbow. There's eczema. There's a ton of, you could see it. These aren't good elbows. Awful. Stop touching my elbows for your own benefit, not for mine. Can we pour one out? If you're going to drink one tonight, pour, you know, we pour out for the dead homies, pour out a little bit for Skype. Do you remember Skype? I almost don't even remember Skype. I don't. What happened to this company? 17 year head start. And Zoom was like, excuse me. They, what? Right now, people at Skype are just banging their heads against their desk. I almost want to get Skype again. I want to, I want to install Skype and use it just to support small business. They are, what a horrible, dumb, idiot-laden company. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Zoom, and Zoom wasn't great when it started. It's not like Zoom was amazing. Zoom was like, it was a mess. I don't know if you remember the bad security of Zoom. It wasn't a good, did you get Zoom bombed? I can't even speak to you guys. I'm going to assume you got Zoom bombed. Some of you got Zoom bombed. You're in a chat with, if you don't know what a Zoom bomb is, it was, it was it's early pandemic, okay? So you're like, you don't understand the virus. You don't trust it. You're just not visiting your family. So you are on Zoom and you have a grid, three by three grid of all your loved ones. And you're talking to your mom. I miss you, mom. I miss you. And then all of a sudden, bottom right-hand corner, like what the, it's somebody has smushed their knob up against their computer screen. And you're like, what? Uncle Javed? Who is that? Turns out it's just a lonely Malaysian teenager. But still, do I need that? Do I need that first thing in the morning? Zoom, you idiots. Anyway, they run the world now. It is um, 8.52. I think, I think I still have some time. I don't know. I got to read a list with little notes on them. I don't remember any of my... Couple mins, he says. Couple mins is what I got. All right. Um, what have you done? What have you accomplished in the pandemic? I'll tell you where I'm at. I have watched uh, all, I've watched every single episode of MasterChef Kids. That's not the life I wanted for myself. I used to be a chef. I used to be a chef. Do you know how insulting it is? for some fucking eight-year-old to come along and be like, I'm a master. Do you know what happens in the backs of kitchens? You wouldn't last a day, kid. You made an upside-down pineapple cake with your grandmother. You're a master? Get out of here. You can't even use real scissors. You've never even done cocaine. Beat it. Master. Anyway, very insulting show, but I watched every single episode just to make my, my children happy. I've also watched a lot of 90 Day Fiance, more than I care to admit. This was a show I would come in the house, my wife, my daughters are watching it. I'd be like, ugh, really? This? And now I'm like, scoot over. Oh my God, why is Samit yelling at Jenny? And my wife is like, just calm down. I'm like, I can't calm down. This is important. Nothing is important. And yet I'm fully invested. How did I go from Ozarks, one of the best shows on television, to 90 Day Fiance, the pandemic, it'll change you, people. It'll change you deep inside in ways you don't even know. I, uh, I'm also too close to my family. I don't mean like we're a close-knit family. I mean our faces are just too close to each other. I don't know if you're going through that. I don't know the way out. I just I, I want to move away and live in a yurt if it's possible. A couple months ago, this is a couple of months, and this is probably January. I remember looking at my wife across the dinner table, and I was like, have you always chewed your food like that? Like that. You've always made that noise? You've done that? Okay. I mean, you're just getting to learn new things about people in your life all the time. My son, he's five. Papa, we're best friends. I'm like, dude, if I'm your best friend, I'm going to kill myself. I'm out of here, dude. I can't. You're born in Etobicoke, you have a Pakistani accent, you wear your underwear inside out four days out of five. You're not, those, I used to have best friends like that. I don't need that best friend anymore. I'm trying to, I'm trying to 
reach a new place in life. Beat it. I'm going to end it on beat it. 8.55. What a great one-hour show, huh? What do you think of that? What do you that think? was amazing. <laughs> Some Not bad. I didn't say the word fundraiser, <laughs> and I didn't say the word food banks. And I feel like everybody needed to say uh, uh, food banks. So just before I go, uh, please support Food Banks of Canada. This is a very, very good cause. I mean, you understand not everybody has money to feed themselves right now. So Absolutely. please lend them your support. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Ali. That was great. Super fun. All right, guys, that was our show. And you can tell because it's gotten dark and I forgot to light myself. Stoner problems. By the way, it's Mayor Patrick Brown's birthday. Happy birthday, Mayor Brown from Brampton. Um, this has been all oh, cool. Comments are still popping off. Exactly. What else were, you, were people going to do anyway for this hour? Like how many times are you going to touch yourself, take a break, watch some comedy, donate some money to the food banks? Uh, we had some amazing comics once again. Uh, Tamara Siobhan, Mickey Hughes, Glenn Foster, and Ali Hassan. Um, thank you once again for uh, donating your time and your talents for this great cause. And to the audience, we'll be doing this again next Wednesday. In fact, for the next three more Wednesdays, every Wednesday at 8 p.m., Barry Uncovered. Uh, tune in, have a laugh, support. And until next time, see you later. Have a good night.